Is John Bones Jones the greatest of all time? Of course. Let's watch the video anyway. It's really hard to confidently say that John Jones is the greatest of all time. This has honestly been one of the hardest scripts I've ever written for because I have well, I probably flip-flopped my opinions and my arguments like four times over the span. Actual titles? Why John Jones might not be a cheater and may be the GOAT. Why John Jones will never be the GOAT. Why John Jones be, will he be the greatest of all time? Okay, okay. Of a week. And even after all of the extensive research and looking into the context I of things, protein. I'm really not sure about my conclusion. So I'm going to show you all of the research and all of the digging that I found and let you decide. But before we begin, we obviously have to talk about John Jones's fight against Cyril Gaon this Saturday. After three years of- Ah, you finally got a sponsor. Good shit, TJ. Get that money in. Looking at his resume, he holds the record for most title fights at 14. 14. He also holds the record for most title defenses at 13. Okay. He is tied with the third longest win streak in UFC history okay. at 13. He is the youngest champion ever at 23 years old. Mm. And looking at the people he's beaten, we're looking at a huge array of Hall of Fame fighters such as Daniel Cormier twice, Shogun oh, wow. Hua, Leona Machida, Rampage hey. Jackson, Jackson, Rashad Evans, Glover Teixeira, Alexander Gustafson, also twice, Vitor Belfort. He's also 26 and one, but that one loss was a DQ, DQ for 12 yeah, to six that, elbows. Yeah, 12 to six so elbow. he's essentially undefeated. I, that sounds like GOAT status. The only reason why people could say no is all the drugs and the, the abuse and stuff like that. But maybe he put that behind him. Let's hope for the future. So what's the problem? How is he not the consensus GOAT? It's so you're probably saying it's of because of brain. his character. John Jones, as good as he is in the octagon, is not a good person outside of it. I made a video detailing his criminal history, but he's not the GOAT because of those reasons. Okay. In this video, we'll keep it within the context within the of ring. the sport. Okay. So what is it? Why is he not the consensus greatest of all time? Well, I'll give you three words performance enhancing drugs everybody so posted it, a question earlier this week on my community poll asking whether or not john jones is the consensus the best the <laughs> there seems to be two camps the first saying that john jones is the goat no doubt no questions the second saying john jones will never be the goat because he's a cheater and but if everybody's cheating then nobody is and a lot of people are doping a lot of people are doing illegal things to make the fight wait uh, anyway so what, what is this there is no such thing as, oh, he's the greatest and he never cheated, ever. I don't think that's a thing unless you go way back in the day before performance enhancers was a thing. And at first glance, it's hard not to look past what the latter is saying. He's tested positive to PEDs twice. The first time was after he won the interim title against Ovin St. Pru ahead of UFC 200 where he was supposed to rematch DC. The second time was after his win against Daniel Cormier, the second time for the title. And technically he tested positive a third time for the same substance he tested positive for during that Daniel Cormier fight, but I'll get into the details of that positive test later on. So as bro. you can see, he's been stripped of a title twice because of positive PED tests, which does not look good for John Jones's GOAT case. When I originally got I mean, here, I thought this- I mean, yes and no. What I think the UFC really needs to do, MMA as well, they need to go away, go with the way of bodybuilding. So in bodybuilding, a lot of people are on performance enhancers. Everyone, like the biggest guys you see, they're not natural. Chris Bumstead, all these guys, they are not natural. And like, yeah, you could say they're not on the cycle whenever they perform, but they've been on the cycle. That stuff changes your body. There's no, oh, I did steroids one time 20 years ago, and now I'm, I'm like natural. That's not how that works. So I think the UFC needs to have a, just a brand new category, people that are enhanced and people that are natural. It's what the bodybuilding um, professionals do. They have an all natural male, and then they have people that are enhanced. And you can see, you can see the difference. Both guys are in the gym regularly. They're dieting, they're performing. You see the muscles. You can see the natural guy is not big and bulky like the people that are enhanced. So I think it should just go that way. Why not? Why not? Because in performance enhancing drugs are so prominent in life, period, that everybody, damn near everybody in the gym at least is using them. You see a big 13 year old benching 300 pounds, He's on PEDs. Is it a good thing? Fuck no. But he's on trend. He's on steroids. He's on whatever. They're all on it. 
you might as well just accept it. It's like tattoos. Tattoos were a taboo for a very long time. Tattoos are normally and readily accepted. Even people in high careers have tattoos. This judge over here, a referee, he's, he got tattoos and his, his shirt's rolled up. People in CEO positions, they have tattoos. It's normal. So why not? This was it. John Jones can't be the GOAT because he's been stripped twice of a title. Technically three times, but the third time was because of his involvement in the DUI. But that doesn't take away from the fact that he got tested positive twice for PEDs and got stripped because of that both times. But let's take a deeper look at those positive tests again. So the first time John Jones tested positive, he would specifically test positive for clomiphene, an anti-estrogen substance, and let you go an aromatase shit. inhibitor, which also lowers estrogen, and yeah. both are said to increase free testosterone levels. Yeah, However, John Jones would famously argue that the reason why those banned substances were in his body is because of some sex enhancement pills he took prior. And the arbitration <laughs> did in fact fall. I mean, yeah, sure, but... I mean, cheating is cheating, right? I was in the military. Literally, you could get thrown out of the military for eating a specific type of, uh, pro not protein bar, but it was like a, a chewy bar. You know what I'm saying? Because there was hemp inside of the bar. And if you ate like three or five of those, you'll pop positive for being on marijuana. But eating that bar did not make you high. It's just people enjoyed it. And it was sold on base. So something that was sold on base could get you thrown out of that same military because you ate it and you didn't know about it. It's it's ridiculous, but it happens. Find that the sex pills it that happens. he was apparently using had these banned substances and called John Jones, quote, not a drug cheat. Though the arbitration and the UFC both agreed that John Jones was careless in the way he was checking his substances and what he was ingesting, so subsequently he was still banned for a year. But at the end of the day, I don't really see John Jones as a cheat here. Even though it's hard to believe John Jones at times, taking sex enhancement pills without really knowing what's inside of them also seems like an equally John Jones move. Though the second time he got popped by USADA, which is right after he beat Daniel Cormier for the title, is a much more interesting case. So for this test, John Jones tested positive for a steroid called Terenobol, which is a legitimate steroid used in performance, unlike his first test where he was just popped for anti-estrogen substances that can be found in sex enhancement pills and over-the-counter drugs. So this is now obviously, right. if John Dude. Jones intentionally took Terenobol, that would completely destroy his career, taint his legacy, and basically take him out of the GOAT conversation for being a cheater. But, let me guess, he got it from a doctor prescribed. But there's a catch. Okay, at this point, it may seem like I'm skipping around a bit, but I promise I'll come back and wrap things up nicely. So the third time John Jones got popped for a performance-enhancing drug was right after the second time he got popped for Terenobol. And right. in this case, it was also Terenobol. However, in this case, Dana White and the UFC decided not to ban John Jones because they thought the substance was pulsing in his system and also the oh. amount of the substance found in his system was at picogram the picogram, levels. Gram, bro. Now, a picogram the, is one yeah, trillion small as of shit. a gram. Small and USADA officially shit. said that this amount of substance within it someone's body is anything. not enough to affect performance. Yeah. Though what many people forget is that the first time he tested positive- you know, that's crazy how we got those type of scales though. They, uh, bro, that is tiny as shit and they just found it like that. That's crazy. For Terenobol, which is the second time that's he tested good, positive test. for any PEDs, this was also at a picogram level. Please correct me in the comments so if I'm wrong, it, but I couldn't find a confirmed number on how many picograms he was tested positive for the first time he got popped for Terenobol, though apparently it should be under 100 picograms. See, this number is very important, as recently, at the time of this recording, USADA has changed its rules on PEDs and the amount that is considered cheating and raised the bar to 100 picograms, meaning anything okay. below 100 picograms is, is not considered cheating. John Jones would take okay. to Twitter and say that he's essentially officially been cleared from USADA and claims that his career no longer has an asterisk. John Jones also tweeted out a picture of another tweet by a physician basically saying that he should get reparations from USADA mm. and that his no contest against DC should be restored to a win because of the new rules. Okay. Though some may but still- You can't really, because the rules change does not give you uh, a leeway uh, to get your record back, bro. You got popped back in the day just because it's legal now doesn't mean you're, you're free, you're good to go. Because imagine all the people that got arrested in Colorado for smoking weed. 
now that weed is legal in Colorado, that doesn't mean that they automatically get reparations. Oh, I was held in jail for smoking weed back in 2001. So I should get some type of money from the government. Like, no, that's not how that works. It's not how that works. Your record is your, your name might not be tarnished, bro. But that record is what it is. You got popped on that date. It is what it is. That shit's gone. That's not coming back. That's not how that works. You can pretend. Sure. But that's not how that works. They'll argue that even if picogram traces were found in John Jones, how did the Torino ball even end up in his body in the first place if he really didn't cheat? Which is a good point but this has happened to a lot of other fighters who have tested positive and didn't really cheat intentionally take the case of yoel romero back in 2016 yoel romero was popped by usada for a banned substance however he won a lawsuit and 27 million dollars i might add against the wow. company for not putting the banned substance on the supplement that yoel romero took wow. and this okay, happened but that still doesn't have anything to do with um the ufc he sued the company, sure, because they didn't put whatever was in their product. That's against the law. So, of course, you're going to win that lawsuit. And that did tarnish his reputation and it put his career in jeopardy. That's not the same thing. Happens more often than you think. If a supplement manufacturer does they don't not put it on their there. machinery That's against properly, the, law. the batch of one supplement can have residue of another batch of a completely different supplement which leads to situations like these so Cross contamination the and it's really up to you to decide whether or not john jones is truly a cheater on one side whenever he did get popped for performance enhancing drugs it was either drugs that could be found in other things such as sex pills or it could be the result of tainted supplements and also because of the rule change from usada he's technically not even a cheater by their new rules new though rules. on the other hand that you can see these new the rule changes as kind of suspicious and kind what, ha what happens if they change the rule back that doesn't make any sense why would they change like they changed the rule. Cool. Your record's clean. Now, 10 years from now, they change it again. So what? Now we go back even farther to put that one back on there? That's not how that shit works, bro. Kind of coincidental that it's coming right before his historic fight against Cyril Gunn. This could be a ploy to clean up John Jones's career, exonerate him from any labels as being a cheater okay, or that any is, slew um, of other ulterior motives. That is definitely a, a conspiracy theory. Is it really that important for the company to make John Jones' career look that good? People love John Jones. People hate him. Him having a perfect career is for him, and it's for the branding, his brand specifically. I don't think that will really help the UFC. Like, cool. John Jones, he never cheated, whatever. He's the greatest, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Cool. Fucking 80 years from now, when the UFC is older, there's going to be some new kid that comes around the block and destroys John Jones's record. That's just how it is. That's how life is. People think Michael Jordan, nobody will ever be better than Michael Jordan. You're not going to be alive to see somebody surpass Michael Jordan. You're not going to be alive for it. That's just how life is. The, the longer humans stay alive, the stronger we get, the taller we get, the dumber we get. You know, you look at society, but you're not going to be alive for it anyway. Though, if the best case scenario does work out for John Jones, which in this case is him winning over Cyril Gaon dominantly this coming weekend and also getting exonerated for all of his positive tests, then in my eyes, he's no doubt the greatest of all time. See, right now, my GOAT is GSP. We're GSP talking an dope. equally dominant resume, a double champ coming years after his retirement and a completely clean drug record. But if John Jones beats Cyril Ghosn and gets exonerated from his cheater label, then that's it. He has a better resume than GSP. See, he'll have the double champ status very similar to how GSP got his. And if his no contest against DC gets overturned to a win, then his win streak gets extended to 18, which would surpass Anderson Silva for the longest win streak in UFC history. And if we remove his one DQ loss, then his win streak gets extended even further to 22. As much as I love GSP, he is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite fighter of all time. It's going to be hard to deny this resume from John Jones and not call him the greatest. You know what's crazy, TJ? GSP never had any issue in his record stance. You got to do a whole bunch of rule changes and flip flopping around 
to make John Jones the greatest of all time. And with that being said, I'm going to leave it at that. Think about it. <laughs>